Bill's not right. Oh, and he's finished it off. Gone. Match day here in Durham, North Carolina, the final one of this USL PDL season. Hello, everybody. Jacob Turner alongside me. I'm Jamie Patel, and it's Tobacco Road FC versus Lionsbridge FC, the visitors from Newport News, Virginia. And Jacob, what are you looking forward to in this final game of the season? Tobacco Road not having the season they really wanted, but how are they going to finish off? Well, I'm hoping they finish off strong, Jamie. Obviously, started off the season really, really well with some big victories on the road and here at home, and then... You know, over the past three or four games, even more than that, just haven't looked at the team we saw in the beginning of the season, unfortunately. But, you know, tonight it's, it's a new game, no playoff position to play for. We got a lot of similar guys in the starting lineup that we've seen, you know, for most of the season. So it's not like we got a lot of new guys in there. And I'm looking forward to this game. I think Tobacco Road has an opportunity tonight to end the season on a high note. Uh, a team, Lions Bridge, obviously early in the season, uh, Tobacco Road went up to Newport News and 6-0 uh, loss was a tough loss for them. Really trying to change the choice of the season for Tobacco Road. And then came back a couple weeks later and got a big 3-2 result. And it was 3-0 in the 80th minute. And as we've seen a lot from Tobacco Road this season, just haven't ended games very well. So they split the series this year. It's, I think it's going to be a good matchup and obviously a little bit hotter of a game than we've seen over the past few weeks. Temperature and the weather is going to play a little bit, bit of a factor tonight. But I think Tobacco Road's got a good opportunity to end this season on a high note get three points and, and look forward to next year and see what they can do and hopefully build on a, on a victory tonight. Now, what do you expect from Cedric Tobias' men? Do you think they're going to play their side of football or they're going to play to win? Um, I think they're going to play to win. I hope they play to win. You know, we've, we've seen Tobacco Road throughout most of the season try to stick to that same system that Cedric Burke has really kind of implemented in this team. And I think at this point, it's, it's time to try something new. Obviously, over the past few games, it's just things haven't gone our way. We haven't we haven't really even been in close games. There's been some disappointing losses that Tobacco Road just haven't been in, in good position to get any points out of. And tonight, I want to see them just go for it. Have some fun. Not a lot matters in this game tonight. It's, it's three points or bust. If we lose, it is what it is. And if we win, it is what it is. The only thing that we have to play for really is the fact that Charlotte Eagles sit with the same record as us, and they have another game to play as well. So if we win and Charlotte Eagles lose, we can finish in fourth place with, based on this season, Obviously not the best season we could have, but to finish fourth after a, a disappointing campaign for the most part, it would be a good finish for this team. And hopefully, like I said, can build on some success going into the next season because I'm sure you'll see a lot of these similar players coming back next year and, and hopefully having a better season than we saw this year. And speaking of you know, not finishing off games, it's been a topsy-turvy season for not just Tobacco Road, but all the teams. Charlotte mm -hmm. Eagles, the last year's USL PDL champions, mm -hmm. losing games left, right, and center. And it's really just been the front runners, North Carolina FC under 23s and Myrtle Beach Mutiny, mm -hmm. who we just saw beat Tobacco Road in two straight matches. Yeah. They've controlled this league. And for Tobacco Road, coming out here tonight against a team where between these two sides, the last two fixtures, there's been 11 goals. In two fixtures, I mean, there's going to be goals scored here tonight. Am I wrong? Yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of goals scored here tonight, Jamie. And I hope there is. Obviously, like the one we talked about, the 6-0 thrashing, unfortunately, Tobacco Road was on the wrong side of. And that was a game that if you watch the highlights, Tobacco Road has some real good opportunities to make that a game and just didn't take advantage and, you know, having to catch up and try to play on the, uh, try to play on the front foot. And Lionsbridge countered beautifully that game and ended up scoring six goals on them. But as we saw last time they played here, 3-2 victory for, for uh, Tobacco Road. They got up 3-0 in the 80th minute, had some injuries for Tobacco Road. A couple guys got subbed off. They really just changed the course of this game. Ended up being a real tight 3-2 win for Tobacco Road. But they were really dominant in that game. And so really, both games this season, it's been Lions Bridge on top and then Tobacco Road really on top for 90 minutes. So I'm looking forward to tonight. Obviously, we see a little bit of changes like we'll go through in the, in the pregame show a little bit more. There's a lot of changes in this Lions Bridge team that we've seen all season. Some important guys missing the leading scorer, not in the squad for Lions Bridge tonight. But Tobacco Road on the other end, a lot of familiar faces. Got a few guys back from injury that will come into this team. And I think this is a, a strong Tobacco Road side to finish off the season. And Lions Bridge on the, on the other side, a lot of changes. So it's interesting to see how these two teams match up because there's a lot of different players that really didn't feature in some of these matches planned tonight. So, yeah, going to be a lot of goals scored. I think it's going to be a hopefully a high-scoring affair. Uh, last game of the season, neither team planned for anything. It'll be good to see a, a, a good uh, a game like that with a lot of goals in the season. I think everybody wants to watch some entertaining soccer, and hopefully we get that tonight. And you mentioned a big point that I wanted to touch on, the, mi the miss of Jalen Brown for mm -hmm. Lions for yeah. Jesse. Huge miss. Mm -hmm. How is Tobacco Rose forwards going to deal with that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big miss for, for Lionsbridge. Uh, he scored seven goals on the season, um, really played over 1,000 minutes for Lionsbridge, a really important player for them. He's not even in the squad tonight. Not sure what that, that's, if that's due to injury or if he's just finished the season early. 
Um, some of these guys, you know, only play a few games and decide to, you know, rest up for the collegiate season comes around. So big miss for Lions Bridge tonight. I'm interested to see how Tobacco Road plays against the, the other forwards that the Lions Bridge has in there, though, because they have, this is a really good team. The likes of Felix Colmenthaler and midfield we're familiar with, obviously doing some commentary up at Appalachian State. I'm interested to see how he matches up with the likes of Mauricio Pineda, and, and, and I think that's really going to be an interesting matchup because they're both going to be playing that defensive midfield position for their respective clubs. So looking forward to see how that goes. But on the other hand, this is, like we mentioned, Jamie, this is just a little bit of a changed lineup for Lions Bridge. And without Jalen Brown in there, not sure where they're going to get the goals from. So maybe we don't see as many goals tonight coming from them. And, but for Tobacco Road, that's a positive. So this defense should be looking at this team sheet and feel confident going into it. Absolutely. Well, coming up after this short break, we'll have first team lineups for you and kickoff from Durham County Memorial Stadium.
Vilsack, right? Oh, and he's finished it off! Gone Welcome into Durham County Memorial Stadium. Hello everybody, Jamie Purcell alongside Jacob Turner for Tobacco Road and Lionsbridge FC on the final day of the USL PDL season. We have starting lineups for you tonight, starting with Lionsbridge in goal for them, Joe Rice. The back line consists of Parker Washburn, Robbie Jenkinson, Tennant McVeigh and Austin Graham. Mealfield for Lionsbridge FC consists of Hazuki Hashizume, Simon Fitch, Felix Colmenthaler and James Lee. Up top for Lionsbridge FC is Aladin Alfarez and James Ellis. Yeah, for Tobacco Road tonight, Jamie, in a familiar line, uh, formation, excuse me, the most of the same formation we've seen all season with that 3-5-2. In goal for Tobacco Road, Zach Scott, Brad Ruhak, Alex Kamzia, and Matthias Frick complete the defense for Tobacco Road. Max Moser, Joaquin Del Rosario, Mauricio Pineda finds himself back in the midfield starting lineup. Antonio Lopez and John Nelson round out the midfield with Toph Wada finding himself back in the starting lineup after missing out on a couple of home over the past few home games. And Ben Fisher starting up top alongside him. Jamie, so decently strong squad like we mentioned in the pregame show for Tobacco Road. It's a familiar squad that we've seen all season and hopefully they can go in and stamp their authority early on this match. And we are underway Tobacco Road grabbed early possession and Ben Fisher gives it away after he tried to control off his chest. We're cleared away by Linesbridge and Tobacco Road will have it right back. We Max Moser, the Austrian, to take the throw in. And who do you think is going to set the early precedent here, Jacob? I hope it's Toph Wide. I think he's the, the guy, the danger man for Tobacco Road tonight. And I hope he can get on the ball early, make things happen. We know how good he is on the ball. If he can get in around that box with the ball at his feet, he's either going to make some an ideal pass, a dangerous pass for Tobacco Road, or he's going to have a shot on goal and really cause some problems. And Tobacco Road trying to cause problems early. Cleared away by Joe Rice. Headed back by Pineda, and Nelson couldn't find Joaquin Del Rosario. Yeah, Jamie, Tobacco Road sitting on 3-7-3 three, and three on the season right now. at Lionsbridge sitting 4-5-4 and f four on the year, sitting in third place right now. So Lionsbridge, first year in the PDL South Atlantic Division, and they've had a really strong start to the year. I'm sure Tobacco Road would like to, to be in their position, but nonetheless have an opportunity to, to pick up three points against them tonight in the final match of the season. Lopez. Over to Ruhak, and now Comsia. Here's Matthias Frick. Compatriots with Max Moser on this right-hand side. Both Austrian, both also playing at Duke University over here in Durham, North Carolina. And Ben Fisher forces a mistake out of Robbie Jenkinson. Yeah, Jimmy, and back to your point on Matthias Frick. I'm excited to see him in the lineup tonight. I haven't seen a lot of them. Obviously, joined Tobacco Road a little, li little after the midway point in the season. So I'm excited to see how, how he performs out on that on that left side is a left-sided uh, central defender. It looks like what he's playing tonight. And here he is, Pineda. Lovely skill. And Pineda trying to find the runner, Moser. He's overcooked that pass. It's a good run by Max Moser as well. Great bit of skill by Mauricio Pineda to get a couple of yards and only thing missing from that little play by him was the was the was the finished product with the ball, but decent start for Tobacco Road. Definitely look like they have that sense of urgency tonight, which was what you'd expect in a low pressure game like this. Come out, have some fun, try to stick some goals early and just express yourself out there. This is fun stuff. This is Graham. Hashizume. And he was flagged for looks like it might have been a handball. Controlled it with his arm. Alex Comsey, the captain for Tobacco Road. You can hear him yelling from up here, Jamie. Talking to his attackers to go pressure that ball up there. As Lionsbridge had a ton of time to just have a cross in. And Austin Graham delivered a decent ball as well, but it was a handball in the end. But Comsey has been a vocal leader all season and had a, has had a decent run for Tobacco Road. 
Frickin' Wada couldn't control. He was trying to send in Nelson on that left-hand side. Here's Washburn. Headed back by Ellis. This is Coleman Tala. Seen out by Lopez, but we are throwing for Lionsbridge. Looks like the away side are starting to get a grip on this game early on. You know, decent position here for Lionsbridge as well. Looks like pa Parker Washburn on the throw. Guy we're familiar with, Jamie. Playing up at Appalachian State University alongside Felix Comenthal, who just played on the ball back there. So, also Some familiar faces here tonight, Jamie. Also a local to this area, Parker Washburn coming from Cardinal Gibbons. A high school in the Raleigh area, so not too far away. Definitely has some friends and family at this match tonight. Yeah, interesting to see him not playing in North Carolina for you know plenty of PDL teams across the Triangle, Tobacco Road, NCFC, even the Carolina Dynamo over in Greensboro. So interest, interesting to see him playing in Virginia Beach, but obviously their head coach Chris Wally has some connections to App State, former assistant there. Also former head coach up at Lee's McCray College, where I've had some time. Spent some time up there helping out with their athletic program. So surprising to see a couple of App State guys playing Virginia Beach. Not what you'd expect, Jamie. No, not at all. Quite far away, but connections will get you quite far in recruiting players. Yeah, they will. Moser driving forward as he always likes to do. And it was cut out nearly by Fitch. And Lionsbridge still come away with it. Tried to hoof it forward for Ellis. And it's headed away by Ruhok. Pineda turns the corner and finds Nelson. And back to Nelson from Del Rosario. And what a revelation Johnny Nelson has been in this Tobacco Road SC side. Not getting a fair share of good results in his performances, but he has been a very good top performer for Tobacco Road. And always looks a threat going forward. And defensively, he does a job as well. Yeah, I love watching John Nelson, Jamie, since he's come into this team. Had such a good freshman campaign at North Carolina, starting all 22 games for them. and He's just such a solid player. The, the way he attacks guys from that left-back position, runs straight at them. He's very direct with his play, very physical guy as well. and He's just very skilled on the ball. He was the number one recruit, according to some you know, big soccer, collegiate soccer rankings, coming into to North Carolina last year, so... I mean, being the number one recruit in the nation says a lot about it. There's a ton of really good talent across America. So, yeah, John Nelson's been a really good player. Unfortunately, this hasn't been able to get the results he's wanted. Washburn. Coleman Toller now nearly found the feet of Hashizume. It'll be a throw in for Los Toros. Pineda. Now Frick. And Jamie, it looks like Lionsbridge is playing a bit of a 4-3-2-1 right now, a little bit of a, a change than what we expected. Thought they were lining up in a traditional 4-4-2, but looks like they only got, I believe it's James Ellis leading the line. Yeah, James Ellis leading the line right now. So, interesting change. Not sure if they if the line, if this uh, sheet that we got obviously looks like they were supposed to line up in a 4-4-2, but... Seems to have changed it up in the start of this game, but interesting formation to see, especially going against a really a back five in Tobacco Road with one striker. It might be a little difficult. Clip towards Ellis. It's Ruhawk on the chase. And he does well to marshal it away. And, Jamie, I think one of the keys to tonight's matchup for both teams is that battle in the midfield. I think whoever wins the midfield tonight, as as in most games, soccer games that you watch at any level, usually the team that wins the midfield ends up, you know, winning the match. But I think it's just super important tonight, just because of you know, the likes of Mauricio Pineda back in the lineup and Antonio Lopez, a guy that's come in and has had a really good four or five games for Tobacco Road since he's been called into the squad late in the season. So it's a good, solid midfield for Tobacco Road. As he loses out, Alfarez, Coleman Tala. Shifted over to Hashizume, and his cross come shot is collected by Zach Scott. Yeah, poor poor decision there from Hashizume. Gets the ball in a decent position and just rushes his cross there. Komathal is making a decent run to the front post as well, and 
Hashizume just rushes it and ends up being a letdown for Lionsbridge. But Lionsbridge starting to get a little more of a foothold in this game. Tobacco Road started off on the front foot for the most part, but it hasn't been the case since as Lopez just plays a hoping ball forward that, to nobody. Joe Rice has been immense in that Lionsbridge goal all season for this club. And in Savannah Road, he kept a clean sheet in the home fixture at Pomoko Stadium and wasn't able to do that when Savannah Road came back home to Durham County and won 3-2 on the night. A crazy game if you watch that one. 3-0 up with a little over 10 minutes to go and Lionsbridge were... Let back into that one. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, we were definitely on the edge of our seats watching that one. It's a back row just completely dominated for 80 minutes. And then a couple injuries, a couple late changes in defense really just changed the whole complexion of the game. And Lionsbridge found themselves needing one goal to tie it up and go home with a point. And we're a bit unlucky not to get it based on the way they played the final 10 minutes. But you know, on the whole of the result, Tobacco Road certainly deserved it over their overall play for most of the 90 minutes. But it's been a theme all season, Jamie. This Tobacco Road team – in the last 20 to 30 minutes of games have just unfortunately just not been good at all. So hopefully it'll, it'll change it tonight in the last game of the season and just see if they can finish this game strong. They've obviously started it decently well, but you got to play a full 90 in this league or you're going to find it points hard to come by. Both of these teams playing attacking football in both of the games that they played each other early this season. And is this going to be an instant classic? I hope so, Jamie. Based on what we've seen this year, I mean – a 6-0 thrashing, goals galore but for Lionsbridge, and then really a great 3-2 game here a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, I mean, based on the results this season, you'd expect it, but you just never know with, when these two teams meet. Been a bit inconsistent, as in most teams in this division. Ellis. Fitch. Simon Fitch, the fulcrum of this Lionsbridge side, controls everything that goes to the midfield. Does a lot of the young Sung work. Headed on by El Fares, but Ellis wasn't able to get on the end of it. Yeah, El Fares, a big physical presence up there for Lionsbridge. Tobacco Road defense got to be sure they know where he's at at all times. It's certainly going to be a physical threat for them going forward. Fitch controls it again for Graham. Now it's Ellis. Back over to Graham and once more with James Ellis. Alfarez. This is nice link up play from Lions Ridge. Cut out by Moser very strongly. And then Lions Ridge retained possession. Looked like it took a flick off of the Tobacco Road defender. And the referee points to the corner. First of the night. Falls to Lionsbridge. Jamie, we're seeing it again. One of Tobacco Road's biggest problems this season has been building out from the back. Max Moser did a great job and just sends a hoping ball forward when he had options. So it's been a consistent theme. If Tobacco Road really found it hard to build out of the back this season. It'll be lead to take. It's going to fall somewhere. It falls to Hashizume. And it's well wide of the target. Yeah, Pineda with just a poor clearance right to the to the. 18 and Hashizumi has a ripper and unfortunately for him just wasn't good connection on that ball there but uncharacteristic mistake there by Pineda just putting it right back into the danger area. Zach Sot just taking his time pushing his men forward with this goal kick. Headed on by Wada and then by Graham Alfares. Some distinguishable players uh, for Lions Ridge with all sorts of different haircuts. But meanwhile, Pineda wins it back for Tobacco Road. Finds his club team, uh, his college teammate Nelson, who cross nearly found the top corner. Yeah, Jamie, I'm a player of John Nelson's quality. That is a poor cross. Had time over there to take a touch and look, look up, see who he wanted to cross the ball to, try to find someone's head, and instead starts to play at one time, and the ball goes straight out of bounds. Good position there for Tobacco Road, and the final product just not there so far tonight. Poor cross by Nelson, but he's getting in good positions, and if he can keep doing that for the rest of the evening, he's going to find himself making things happen for Tobacco Road. He's got too much quality. Headed on by Comsia. Fisher 
So free kick for Lionsbridge. Fisher are judged to have fouled his man. Like I was saying just moments ago, very distinguishable players on the pitch for Lionsbridge. Numerous sorts of hairstyles in. Yeah. Alfarez and Colmenthal are <laughs> having the same sort of idea with the bleach blonde hair. Yeah, Jamie, I'd like to see you with that ble bleach blonde haircut. I know you're... You come, a, you come a lot of these games with a fresh cut, Jamie. Just dye it blonde one time. Man. I, think, I think you could pull it off. Not many guys could, but I think you could. The banter on this broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, has been absolutely well, That's not terrific. banter. That's, I'm hoping he'll come in with it one time, but you don't think you could pull it off? Most definitely not. Disappointed. Let's hope we're not disappointed with the result tonight as Tobacco Road get back underway. An easy free kick for Zach Scott to claim, but they give it straight back to Lionsbridge. Hashizume and Alfarez, it was just behind him. Pineda tried to flick it for Lopez. Lopez is still in there. Hashizume has had many touches tonight on the ball. Definitely a creative threat for Lionsbridge going forward. Yeah, Hashizume has seen a lot of the ball tonight. Most of Lionsbridge's attacks. He's had some part to do with, so good start for him so far. Definitely need to be wary of him over there. Likes of John Nelson and let's see his frick over there on the left side. Scott finds Moser and Lee was down to close him down. Moza looking for the run of Wada, who's not offside because it is a throw in, but there'll be another one for the men in black. Just a lack of midfield options, really, for Tobacco. Nobody's showing. Antonio Lopez in a good position there, but not, not, not choosing to check short and just receive that ball and turn. We've seen that in the past few games. Just a lack of creativity, a little bit of lack of movement in the midfield, I think, has really let them down for most of this season. Wada trying to turn. He has no space. And Coleman Fowler feeds Lee. Lee was looking for the run of Ellis. And it will roll all the way out for a goal kick. Neither side really creating any clear opportunities. The last shot I remember was from Hashizume from well outside the box. Yeah, it's been a, a fairly even start looking at both teams tonight. Not, neither team really been... Outstanding so far. It was a great ball there by Frick. Moser. Fisher just couldn't reach it. And 17 minutes gone. Nil-nil here at Durham County Memorial Stadium. Tobacco Road playing at home. They usually get an early goal, but tonight's not quite been that story. Yeah, Jamie, most of the season we've seen Tobacco Road either on the receiving end or on the wrong side of a, of a goal this season, especially early on. And haven't seen that tonight. About 16 minutes in right now, and neither team really threatening. Both still trying to find their feet in this game. Moser with another deep throw in. Lee. Coleman Toller. All the way back for McVeigh. And he's trying to find the run of Hashizume. Zach Scott just taking his time to release the ball. <laughs> Trying to push his men forward yet again with a high line. <laughs> Headed on by Fisher. Graham has Wada to deal with. He clears it but only finds Lee. Alfares. Being pressured by Lopez and Moser and forced into a mistake. Ruhok recollects for Tobacco Road. Frick. It's a good ball for Lopez. He'll clip it forward for Wada. McVeigh just dealing with the pressure, using his strength to his advantage. And Graham just taking a couple touches, not letting the ball touch the ground before he cleared it away. But Lopez wins it back for Tobacco Road and then comes here. The nothing clearance. Not sure he needed to do that there. I don't think so. Ben Fisher just coming back from an offside position there, but 
Seen it from, from most of the evening so so far. Tobacco Road playing very direct going forward, sending long balls over the top to the likes of Toph Wada and Ben Fisher, who are two speedy guys, but Lions Bridge in defense, this is a tall physical defense. So I think it's going to be tough to beat them in the air like Tobacco Road have been trying to do, but the lack of really midfield movement, they really have no choice but to get it from a deep position and just send it forward and hope. That's wonderful from Pineda to pluck that out of the sky. Up against Coleman, though, he beat him to the ball, but to no avail for Tobacco Road in terms of an attacking opportunity. Headed back by Combs here. And Pineda nearly winning out against Coleman Toller again. That's a key battle in midfield tonight, like we mentioned before. Those two both playing at very high levels in their college careers. Coleman Toller at Creighton before joining Appalachian State. And of course, Mauricio Pineda only down the road at Chapel Hill for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Yeah, Creighton, uh, one of the most respected programs in the country. Of, say probably the best soccer stadium, collegiate soccer stadium in the country as well. The beautiful facility up there. And but yeah, there's a lot of high quality players on this pitch tonight, Jamie. We've seen a, we've really been, you know, blessed to see a really a lot of talent in this South Atlanta division this season. This North Carolina area, Virginia. South Carolina area that we're in right now is just full of talent at the collegiate level as well. So, yeah, it's no difference again tonight. Some really good players on the pitch. Ellis was offside. It's Vancouver really struggling in these first 20 minutes to create any sort of chance. Yeah, they look really solid defensively for the most part. Haven't been tested too much, but positioning-wise and their shape has been really good. I think, unfortunately, so far, I, th I think you'd probably agree with me, Jamie. I, Lionsbridge has just not dominated in midfield, but I think they've won the battle so far in the first 20 minutes or so. And as we've seen a lot this season, Tobacco Road just a little bit flat in midfield, and I'm not sure if it's how they want to play, just choosing to bypass them and go forward as much as they do. Very direct, but the likes of Lopez and Pineda, who are so skilled on the ball, you think they want them to touch, them more, touch the ball more, but... Hasn't been the case, especially over the last few games. You saw Pineda early on in this one, just trying to get on the ball as much as he can, but he's been forced back into more of a defensive position. It looks like he's playing in that defensive midfield role. Mm -hmm. And you have to give some credit to Lionsbridge as well. They've done a really good job of pressuring him every time he touches it. Lee. His ball is too deep. Hachizume will try and pressurize Nelson and Ends up going out for a goal kick. Ball boy just struggling to get the ball over for Zach Scott. Was in such a rush to get the ball had just run out. He forgot to throw the ball he had in his own hands. It's a great hustle down there, Jamie. By those by those ball boys and ball girls down there. I've been kids got some wheels on him, have to sign him up next season. It may be more than one season that we have to wait for that, but yeah. nonetheless, but excellent effort all around here. Well, you know, Jamie, at any level, you got to scout. You got to scout early. Got to stick scout off and get out scouts across the country. And looks like we've got them with these ball boys. We'll have to go far. I heard Arsene Wenger's looking for a new job. I heard Maybe. he is too. Hopefully, we can get him over to Durham. And, you know, I think if Arsene Wenger come in, he might sell this stadium out. Yeah, if we're talking. People who can really scout young talent. I think Arsene Wenger is right at the top of that list. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly, Jamie. At any level, Arsene Wenger is a guy with his proven track record over the years. He's just scouted some absolutely superb players. and Disappointed to see him leave Arsenal, but I hope he gets another job of football. I'd like to see him as a France manager, in all honesty. And Fisher was brought down as he tried to play the ball, and the referee calls it back for a free kick. That's 20, 28 yards from goal. Be interesting to see who decides to take this. No Champagne Mendoza in the side, so. Really would like to know who's going to be behind this. It looks like it's possibly Pinedo or Mustafa Wada. We've seen Wada take free kicks before for Tobacco Road. I'd fancy Mauricio Pineda here. Bend that ball in with his right foot to that back post. Be very dangerous strike. You always want to, from this position, you want a right-footed guy to take this for the most part. He can just put a lot of whippage on it. 
Here's Pineda. It's a good strike, but Joe Rice does well to keep a lid on that opportunity for Tobacco Road. A decent technique there. Unfortunately, just right at Joe Rice and not enough pace on that. Never going to beat the likes of, of Rice in, in net, but another opportunity. Headed back by Frick. Washburn playing in an unfamiliar position for him. Many times for Appalachian State, he's played in central midfield, but tonight for Lionsbridge, being positioned at right back. Certainly a versatile player. Can play in a whole bunch of different positions. and Yeah, it's just to see him at right back. Don't know if I've seen him play there in his in the games I've seen him play at Appalachian State, but he's looked solid there so far. Hasn't been called into action too, too much, but Fisher nearly cut it out. McVeigh. Lee did well to flick it on for Ellis. That's a good turn. And his ball just couldn't find Alfarez. Not enough on it. And Coleman Toller fouls Ruhok. Ruhok will look to get this one going quickly, but the referee just reminding him, put the ball back where it was. Lopez. Now comes here. Wada. Nearly got a turn on Fitch, but Lionsbridge will do well to clear this away. And Rice found no one in particular. His distribution not being the best tonight. Not something he's quite known for, though, e either, is he, Joe Rice? No, definitely not. He's <laughs> As a goalkeeper, distribution is can really set you apart and put you at a whole other level. And Joe Rice... There's a few times we've seen him this season. His distribution hasn't been great, but he's a good shot stopper. And then first and foremost as a goalkeeper, that's, that's what you're looking for. He can handle a little bit of poor distribution, but solid goalkeeper. And hopefully he'll be called in a little bit more action here in the next few minutes. And he might be here. Pineda is in behind. Good save by Rice and Del Rosario's effort was blocked. Nelson. And Fisher collides heads with... Hashizume, the referee not blowing his whistle. And now he does. And both of those players looking quite a lot of pain. Both clearly going for the ball. An accidental collision. And we really hope that I, both players make it out okay of this. But well, that's the first clear cut opportunity of the night, and it fell the way of Tobacco Road. Yeah, what a great strike that was by Pineda. Tried to bend it in with his right foot in that bottom right corner, and Joe Rice gets a big hand on it. Great save by him, but then Joaquin Del Rosario with a chance to put that ball in the back of the net. I think he thought that, that ball was in the goal without a without a doubt. And just a great block by the Lionsbridge defender. Don't remember who it was. And just come sliding in. And what a crucial block that was. Tobacco Rosa found themselves 1-0 up with that set with that play right there. But Joe Rice with a crucial interference. And, and credit to Lionsbridge on their toes. Ready at all times. And crucial slide in there to block that because Joaquin Del Rosario. Don't think he could have missed that one if he tried. I could say he was a bit unlucky with the crucial block in the intervention and the build-up to that, but nonetheless, Tobacco Road haven't capitalised and it's still nil-nil. 27 minutes gone and it looks like Ben Fisher and Hashizume come out of that collision all right, at least for the moment. Yeah, no one warming up for Tobacco Road except for Oscar Moreno just on his feet now, jogging a little bit down the touchline, so... Hopefully Ben Fisher's all right. It's like Max Moser's also applying. Something might be in a little bit of pain down there as well, talking to the trainer down there. It's like Ben Fisher's okay. For the moment, Tobacco Road down to nine men. Might have to go through a concussion t test, Ben Fisher. Looks like the trainers are looking at him for that right now. Certainly not an injury you want to play with. Any head type of injury, you got to be as careful as you can be, especially in the last game of a season like this. Not a lot of meaning in it. Only want to get Ben Fisher out there if he's okay to go. So hopefully he's all right, though. He's had a, had a decent season. Scored in midweek against Myrtle Beach as well. So had a decent season for Tobacco Road. Hashizume has made his way back on the pitch as well. as Looked like it was Max Moser who came back on. We apologize for the 
technical difficulties we're having with the time clock you can see on your screen but as soon as we have updates for you we will keep you updated with the time here at Durham County Memorial Stadium and right now we're sitting on 29 minutes still nil nil between the two sides Tobacco Road just moments ago with probably the best opportunity for both sides in this match yeah, completely generally. against the run of play you'd have to say yeah without a doubt Tobacco Road out of nothing really just get a great opportunity Pineda unlucky not to put that in the in the corner of the, in the, of the net but Del Rosario just as unlucky not to finish it as he came in late looks like Lee is down he collided with his own player going for the ball and landed very awkwardly yeah that was a painful looking landing there from James Lee thought he was okay initially but sat there a few seconds and I think he felt the rush of pain because he landed on the back of his head a little bit awkward and hopefully he's all right seen a couple of injuries a couple of head injuries it looks like unfortunately in the past few minutes and hopefully James Lee's okay to continue because it does look like Ben Fisher's going to find himself back on the pitch for Tobacco Road just to give some moment for Tobacco Road to regroup reset as Cedric Bird gives his players some time to drink have a think and reassess their game plan going forward in this first half with at the very least 15 minutes to go there's going to be some sort of stoppage time at the end of this half surely for the injuries that we've had in the other stoppages as well yeah for sure they'll definitely be a little bit out of time at the end of this first half and looks like James Lee's going to be alright having a little walk to the to the bench right now but we'll probably go through the same test that Ben Fisher just went through because can't play with the concussions in today's world Ben Fisher is back on for Tobacco Road. Ellis still, seen being, uh, still being seen by his trainer as Frick finds Wada. Oh, that's lovely from Wada. Through the legs and the back heel. Back from Del Rosario. Can he get to the ball? And his touch let him down. Colmenthaler. What a chest down that was from Del Rosario. That was a lovely bit of play. Best bit of inter interplay we've seen from this Tobacco Road line going forward. Ben Fisher, Del Rosario, and Tafwata all connecting there. Hopefully Moses. they need more of that going into this rest of this first half. Sorry to cut you off there, Jacob. Moses did well to keep it in. Here's Fisher. Looks to be back to normal, at least for the time being. Hashizume. And Del Rosario. It's a silly foul from him. Moses down at the moment, but back on his feet. Not sure if he's going to come off here, but it looks like Oscar Moreno is going to replace him early on. You yeah, saw Max Moser having a few words with the trainer after that Ben Fisher injury, so looks like he's limping a little bit as well, carrying a knock and this late in the season with the collegiate season, hit him and playing at Duke about to start. Don't want to risk an injury, so. I think it's a safe change there. And Austin Moreno, a guy that's had a decent season so far. So, Interesting change there. It looks like Ben Fisher's kind of slid into that right wing back spot, surprisingly. Haven't seen him a lot there this season. Moreno getting his first touch and lucky to not make more of it. Rice with a huge clearance looking for Lee. Ruhok did well to see away the danger. Is Fisher playing in that, as you said, right wing back position? A bit of unfamiliar territory for him, but it's clearly clearly something Cedric Burke saw as a good replacement for Max Moser as Moreno comes in and slots into the position that Fisher was feeling early on. Yeah, I think Moreno, that's obviously his most favorite position playing down the middle for Tobacco Road. And Ben Fisher, a guy with a little bit more versatility can slide back in that right wing back spot with these and I think he'll be fine he's got a lot of speed on him and as a defender speed can bail you out a lot of the time so I think that'll help him out more than anything back there interesting change though a little bit surprised to see maybe not a Dylan Chain come on the field instead a guy that's played a, as a right wing back for most of the season but Cedric Burke decided to go with Oscar Moreno it was flicked along and Combs here managed to get a boot on it it's a corner for Linesbridge Second one of the night for the visiting side. Be taken by Lee again. This 
first delivery was very dangerous and could well prove to be again. And Hashizume managed to get a touch on it. Lee back in from him. And it's a heavy delivery over the head of everybody in the box. Goal kick for Tobacco Road. Del Rosario Fitch maybe went down a bit too easily there soft there from Fitch Del Rosario half the size of him comes in with a little physical shoulder like just a shoulder to shoulder battle there but Del Rosario on the receiving end of that one he was not happy with that as as you can understand I think that was a poor call by the referee I think Fitch as we've seen a little bit in the World Cup some some sold fouls, some some flops, as I like to call them, Jamie. And I think that might have been a, a textbook example of one right there. Looked like he made the most of it for sure. But nonetheless, Linesbridge with another chance to deliver into the box. Jenkinson headed away. And Lopez nearly got on the end of it. And nearly 10 minutes to go until half time here at Durham County Memorial Stadium. Still nil-nil. Lionsbridge look on the side more likely to create a chance at the moment. Tobacco Road just sitting back and absorbing this pressure, looking to break whenever they can. Here Washburn to take a deep throw in for the bridge. Trying to find Coleman Tala. Lee brought it down well, but Fisher cut it out. And couldn't deliver for Moreno. That's a poor giveaway by Ben Fisher. Ashizume, Komentala, cross was blocked. And now Pineda can release some pressure for Tobacco Road. Still with him. And Nelson will look to lead the counter charge. Oh, and he nearly found a pinpoint ball for Tafwada. If you throw in for Tobacco Road. It was a great look there by John Nelson. Tobacco Road a little bit slow on that counter attack. Thought Pineda was going to play it out wide to this right-hand side, but chose to go on the left side to Nelson. Nelson does a great job of winning that ball in the first place and then almost plays a lovely ball through to Tafwada. But just prior to that, Jamie, Ben Fisher, another opportunity for Tobacco Road to counter with numbers. And Ben Fisher with just a, a poor ball, inexcusable. Can't have that in a game like this. But Tobacco Road so content to sit back and absorb pressure. When you get a chance to counter, you have to counter. And Tobacco Road not doing a good job of that so far. You can just sense that this game is going to start getting stretched out. Tobacco Road. A team that looked more comfortable in possession, but haven't really created much from it. Just a little bit short of answers going forward. It's been a theme for the past few seasons, uh, no, excuse me, not seasons, past few games with Tobacco Road. Moreno. Sorry to cut you off, Jared Jacob. Oh, you're fine. Get to that in a moment. Let Nelson. Pineda. Now Moreno, the substitute. His shot was blocked. It'll fall into the hands of Joe Rice. And Jamie, you'll take that all day if you're a Lionsbridge. Oscar Moreno choosing to have a shot from 25 or so yards out with three Lionsbridge defenders in front of him. A little bit of a letdown as Tobacco Road had a little bit of possession on the outside of that box. You'll take that all day from a Lionsbridge perspective. Nelson. Another good first touch from him. He feeds Ben Fisher. He's got Moreno on the outside of him. Wada running up against McVeigh. And McVeigh just had to see it out with the pace of Wada proving a threat. Been impressed with McVeigh so far tonight as well. I think he's done a great job of handling top Wada going forward. Alfares goes down and it's a free kick for Lions Ridge. Try and slow down this match again. Here in the 39th minute. But 
Both supporters group, Lionsbridge and Brightleaf Battalion out in full, full, full force tonight, Jamie. Good to see that. Love that. Absolutely. We love seeing the traveling support as well as our own here at Durham County Memorial Stadium. A wonderful venue for football. And I must say on the away trip to Pomoco Stadium in Newport News, it was a lovely venue as well. And it's a corner for Lionsbridge. Be lead to take again. Lee's in swinging delivery, headed away by Nelson. Fitch. Looks like he lost his bearings there. Be a throw in for Linesbridge. McVeigh, Fitch back in, Scott nearly made a meal of that, oh, caught in two minds it seemed like, tried to grab it and then flicked it away for another corner. And not sure how much Zach Scott knew about that, should have been an easy catch for him, a guy of his length as well, she had no problem getting to that ball but yeah, muffled that one a little bit. Farah's just trying to cause him problems and McVeigh couldn't direct a header on target. And what an opportunity there for Lionsbridge. McVeigh a little bit off balance. I think that's the reason he wasn't able to get that on target, but had no tobacco road defenders jumping with him there, Jamie. And that's an opportunity for McVeigh. He wasn't able to get it on target. And not sure if Zach Scott would have been able to save it because he was on the other side of the goal for the most part. So that's a letdown there for Lionsbridge. Fisher. Nearly found Moreno, but here's Wada. Oh, and Coleman Teller did excellently to come back. Wada just waited on the ball too long. Ashazume and Frick did excellently to get the ball. Ashazume still rolling around on the ground. Tyus Frick just having a pat on the back of Ashazume. It was a bit of a rough landing there, but Clean challenge there by Frick. Good bit of defending as he was had to lunge out and just try to break that attack up. Did a good job. Comes here. Wada. Nelson. Now Lopez. Comentola dug out a challenge and finds Hasazume. Washburn just hoofs it clear. Ellis to chase and did well to maintain possession. Alfaro has a go. Oh, and Lee is free and couldn't get the connection on the shot. What a chance. James Lee just absolutely whiffs at that ball, Jamie. Had tons of time to get a shot on target. A, just a floating ball right to his foot and just flat out misses it. That was an opportunity. Probably the most clear-cut opportunity of the night for James Lee, and he's not able to do anything with it. Disappointing there for Linesman. That's another letdown. Is Linesman's had a, two really good opportunities in the past three or four minutes and just haven't been able to connect on either of them. That was a huge let-off for Tobacco Road. Just Brad Ruhock caught sleeping with Ellis at his back. And with just three minutes to go till half-time. I believe we'll go into the half nil-nil unless something changes between these two sides. Del Rosario. Ruhok being challenged by two. He did well. Comentola pressuring Pineda. This time Combs here. Gets rid of the danger, but not convincingly from this Tamaka Road defense. Tobacco Road find themselves in a familiar position. Just not able to get anything going forward, just sitting back and having to defend and defend and defend over and over again. So, Washburn, Hashizume, blocked by Nelson. Washburn again, He's looking for Lee. Graham beats Moreno to the ball, and now Lee. Graham again. 
Fisher nearly did well to win possession back, but it still falls the way of Linesbridge. Headed on by Alfares. Danger still not cleared, but Combs here marshaled it away. Really strong play from the the centre fold of that Tobacco Road defence. Yeah, great bit of defending there by Comsey to just use his body and shield that ball from from Lee, who was rushing in. Zach Scott giving him a little high five there, thanking his defender for that good work. Comsey, Ruhok, now Moreno. Del Rosario was stretching. Never looked like he was going to get on the end of that pass. And Comsia tried to find Ruhok, but Ruhok just missing out. Back row just looking a bit step slow right now. Step slower than Lionsbridge at the moment. Lionsbridge is looking a little bit more sharp in every aspect. So back row, you need to get back in this game. Plot some pressure up top and just try to force Lionsbridge into mistakes. Because right now, Lionsbridge are just content to keep the ball and do whatever they want with it. Jenkinson's ball is headed away by Ruhok. Ellis. Looks like he might have been clipped by Lopez, and indeed he was. Be anxious to see how many minutes of uh, added time the referee chooses to have right here as we approach in the 45 minute mark. Obviously, a few injuries, a few other stoppages in play. Be surprised to see a few more minutes of extra time than you would traditionally in the first half. Be taken by Robbie Jenkinson again. And it looks surprisingly, Jamie, there's only one minute of extra time to the third official, which is shocking based on the stoppage we've had. Frick allowed it to roll out a play. It'll be a goal kick for Tobacco Road, and with half time beckoning, Linesbridge and Tobacco Road will probably go into this break. None the better from the Result. Del Rosario. Ruhok. Flicked on by Del Rosario. Fisher. Is there a one last chance for Tobacco Road? Fisher. Just tried to carve something out for Tobacco Road. And Rice got down well to save it. Good opportunity there for Ben Fisher as well. Jamie finds himself about 20 yards out and doesn't connect with it. And that is the halftime whistle, the last chance of the half. Fell the way of Ben Fisher, but Linesbridge and Tobacco Road find themselves going into the half goalless at Durham County Memorial Stadium.
Balzac, right? Oh, and he's finished it off! Gone! Welcome back in to Durham, North Carolina. Jamie Patel alongside Jacob Turner. It's Tobacco Road FC taking on Lionsbridge and it's nil-nil at the half-time break and we're just about to get the second half underway. There are a few changes at half-time for both sides. Ben Fisher making way after colliding heads with Hashizumi in the first half and he's replaced by Henry Hanapel, who will probably play in that right-back position that Fisher was occupying. And for Lionsbridge, it's a goalkeeping change. Joe Rice has come off. And Sean Stowe comes in for the bridge. What do you make of that change, Jacob? Interesting to see a goalkeeper change at halftime. Not sure what the reason was for it. Thought Joe Rice had a, a, a really good first half. Made some crucial saves. Especially that one on for uh, Mauricio Pineda. Excuse me, forgot his name for a second. Early in the first half, it should have been a goal. And But I think it's just more of a... A thing where you want to, you want your guy Sean Stowe to get some, get some minutes, you know, late in the season like this. Obviously, not much in this game. Lions is going to finish in third place regardless, no matter what result, you know, gets happens tonight, pretty much. So, yeah, I think it's just one of those changes. But I'm, I'm ex excited to see Hannipal on that right side. I haven't seen a lot of him this season, but he's a very versatile player. Guy who plays club soccer at UNC. So, guy doesn't play at the highest level of collegiate soccer, but. Carolina, obviously, a really, really solid club team over there as well, and he's probably got to be one of their standout players. So, interesting to see him slide in on that right side for Fisher. I thought Fisher had a good first half, but obviously, with that head injury so late in the season, don't want to take any risk. And Good to see Hannah put back on the field, though. A guy last season that played some really big minutes for Tobacco Road and hasn't seen a lot of field this year, but nonetheless, gets to play a, uh, the last 45 of the season, so fitting way to end the season. Absolutely. It's always nice to see players who don't usually get playing time in terms of teams looking for results and feeling that those players can't contribute as much as some of the other guys in the squad. But it's nice to see Sean Stowe in goal for Lionsbridge. And Henry Hannapel, another player who doesn't get too much playing time in the Tobacco Road FC side, who are very talented, but he does not lack any talent, does this boy. Henry Hannapel's a, a really solid player, a guy that... Very versatile, not the fastest player, not the quickest player, but on the ball he's got a lot of skill. Had a really decent season last year, I thought, and was surprised to see him not in the lineup as much this season. Didn't really find himself in a lot of match day squads, but I get to see him back on the pitch and hopefully has a good run out for these final 45 minutes of the year. With Pineda. Nelson. Comes here under pressure from Ellis and Break. It's clearance is deflected away by Kolmantala. You can see this high pressure system from Lionsbridge being implemented at the beginning of this half as it was in the first. Pretty impress impressed, excuse me, by Felix Kolmantala tonight for Lionsbridge in that middle of the park. I think he's done some really good things defensively. He hasn't had a ton of the ball, but when been caught into action on the defensive side, he's done well. It's a nice touch from Moreno. Kolmantala there again. Washburn was pressured by Moreno again and it looks like Rain has gone down. Might have clipped an ankle that he's been struggling with many times this season. Did the referee have a bit of a kit change as well at halftime? I believe he was wearing blue a little bit. Kind of blended in with the uh, Lionsbridge kit. So don't see that too often. But yeah, hopefully Oscar Moreno's all right. We have had a few ankle problems this season. and Looks like that's what's bothering him again. It's Joaquin Del Rosario, such a good teammate. Always there to check on the players. It's not the first time we've seen him there tonight. To a few words of encouragement and check on his his teammates. So hopefully Moreno's okay, but it looks like that right ankle again. Looks like a substitute might have to be substituted, which you, you don't see very often. No, you don't, especially early in the second half like that, and except for an injury situation like this, which I think Moreno's going to be all right. He's not favoring that ankle too too much. Nobody warming up for Tobacco Road yet, so I think he's okay. Can at least try to tough it out for the next few minutes. Couldn't see him back on his feet, having a bit of banter with the substitutes. He yeah, especially broke him a little high five there. They 
going to get the game back underway as Moreno takes back to the pitch and just a few minutes gone in this first half Frick is closed down by Alfares and then cleared away at the last minute by Ruhak but Linesbridge come again Graham and Combs here clears away there's Hanapel. A nice little touch inside. And Antonio Lopez was bundled over by Alfarez. And Tabaka had another chance to counter there. Hanapel got that ball on well, the 20 yard line or so and had Joaquin Del Rosario and acres of space in the middle of the pitch. Just wasn't able to find him. And in the meantime, Lions Bridge players quick to get back. And that's not the first time tonight we've seen Tabaka Road struggling to counter attack. And they've really had some decent opportunities to do so. Is Hannah Pell's touch just lets him down there right under his foot. Ruhart clears it away and Comantola got there. Headed back into the middle and then headed away by Frick. Either side doing well to possess the ball. It's back and forth up in the air. Not the most beautiful football from either side. Pineda was too strong. Wada. Can Tabaka Road make this attack count? Hanapel. It's a good delivery. Nelson. Moreno! <laughs> Just past the far post. It was a clear header for Moreno. Bounced off the turf before he got his head to it and just couldn't redirect it into the corner. Good bit of interplay there by Tabaka Road. Hanapel with a great cross in the middle. Johnny Nelson just beautiful touch to Moreno's head. Takes a bounce and don't really know what other option Moreno had there besides heading the ball. But wasn't able to get a ton of pace on it regardless and just goes a little bit wide. But that's better from Tobacco Road. One of the best plays going forward that we've seen so far in terms of connecting passes, having a good cross in and, and having a, a shot or an attempt on target. And hopefully they can keep that up. Alfares just tugged Ruhok back as he lost the ball. Been a frustrating night for him up top. Not too many chances created by Aladin Alfarez. Yeah, the number 10 for Lionsbridge tonight. <clears throat> Hadn't had the most convincing of games. Haven't been too impressed with him. Big physical presence like him. Just hasn't seen, been able to you know, really dis establish that dominance that he should have as big as he is. And it's unfortunate. Lost out again by Tobacco Road Moreno. Trying to win it back. Hashizume, who's looked impressive tonight for Linesbridge FC. Seen away by Frick. Poor giveaway there by Coleman Thaler. Linesbridge in a good position. Coleman Thaler just tried to play that ball. Hopeful over the top and on a different wavelength than his teammate. Linesbridge made another substitution at the half that we didn't recognize. Brennan Burton came on. And it looks like James Lee came off. Another player who looked like he might have suffered some sort of bad injury. Bad enough to see them off the pitch, but Bren Burton will do his best to try and help his side get an important victory tonight. In the 52nd minute. Still yet to see a goal between two sides who've scored 11 goals between the two, albeit six of them for Lionsbridge in one fixture. I expected this game to be a lot more open than it has been. Good, Jamie. We, in pre-game, predicted a high-scoring affair here and just has not been the case so far. Neither team really having a lot of great opportunities. Either Mauricio Pineda with the best opportunity of the night for, for Tobacco Road in the first half, but... Wada's given it straight to Fitch. Ellis will chase, but Zach Scott came off his line well to claim it. Yeah. Will launch another Tobacco Road attack. Good play there by Zach Scott. Quick off his line, dealt with that pressure. Tobacco Road looks solid in defense right now. I think they've started the second half the better team in the first seven minutes so, so far. Frick finds Ruhok. Now Pineda. Pineda nearly lost out and 
Coleman's all over with another sliding challenge. Just clip the ankles of Lopez. Maybe a bit unlucky, but Savannah Road come away with it. Pineda. And Chris Wally, the Lions Bridge manager, was not happy with that tackle. A few other Lions Bridge players off the bench with their hands up as well. I'm not sure about that one either, Jamie. I thought that was a clean tackle by Coleman Thaler. Moreno being pressured by Coleman Thaler. Just doesn't give up on the ball, does Felix Coleman Thaler for this Lions Bridge side. His defensive work tonight has been superb. Hannapel nearly muscled off it by Burton, and he did really well to find Nelson. Still Johnny Nelson, Moreno, Hannapel was in there and McVeigh had to clear away. Be a throw in dangerous territory for Tobacco Road. Unconvincing goalkeeping there from, from Sean Stowe as well. Thought he was going to come out and just grab that ball. He's only a few feet away from it, but McVeigh had to just clear that ball and get it out of there. Wada kept it in well, still with him. He's turned Washburn inside out. Del Rosario. This is a lot better from Tobacco Road. Pineda. Just exerting a, Brit a bit of pressure. Lopez. In towards Nelson, but McVeigh saw the danger and urges his teammates to wake up. Pineda. Annapel trying to turn the corner. Moreno was jumping with Hashizume and now he's with Alfarez and did really well to win the ball back. That's excellent defensive work from a man who should be well farther forward up pitch. Yeah, I think Oscar Moreno, since he's come on and has done a really good job, made things happen a little bit going forward. A lot of the attacks have come through him and also doing the dirty work. That's what you want to see from your from your attacking midfielder. Obviously, you want to see him making things happen going forward, but if you can get him doing some defensive work, a little bit of that dirty work, as they like to say. And I mean, you, you can't be you can't ask for more from a guy like him. And Rando's done a good job since coming on in the first half. It'll be a free kick for Lionsbridge. Ruhok just clipped Burton on the way through. Looks like it'll be Jenkinson to take. As we settle in to a comfortable night here in Durham. We haven't had too many this season, but the weather just cooling down a bit. A slight breeze. Fitch. He's trying to catch Scott off his line, but Scott was covering that all day long. Yeah, we saw what Fitch was trying to do. Just have a shot with that, uh, with that weaker left foot. and Kind of tell by the way he shot it. Just got way too under that ball. Lofted it right over that crossbar. Never was going to test Zach Scott in net, but... I think Lionsbridge have been on the you know the back foot for most of the second half. The back row have been the, the sharper team so far. Just haven't really been able to to sh get anything to show for it. Had a couple of decent opportunities, but that's it. Fitch. Graham. It's Lionsbridge turn to try and create something here. El Fares. Seen off it by Pineda. Moreno tried to turn and Looks like Jenkinson may well have came out the back of him. Comps here clears. Ellis on the turn. Comfortable enough for Zach Scott in the end, but looked like the minute he left Ellis's boot that it now he found that top, hand co uh, top right hand corner. Quick thinking there from Ellis. Just put that ball on his chest, set himself up on his favorite right foot, and have a go. And Unlucky not to have chest Zach Scott a little bit more, but it ended up being right at him. But better from Lionsbridge there. Best opportunity they've had in the, in the second half by far. Frick. Comps here. Nearly got caught. Hashizume. In for Ellis. Here's a chance to bring it down. Comentola. Skies it over the crossbar and... That looked like a great chance for Lionsbridge to find the opener here. Yeah, Alex Comsey is a relieved man down there for Tobacco Road. His, his poor touch just totally gave Lionsbridge the opportunity deep in their, 
and Tobacco Road half, and Kolmenthaler just not able to get his head over that ball. That ball goes flying over the crossbar, but what an opportunity that was for Kolmenthaler. Not a guy who's known for scoring goals, but at least has to test Scott there in goal right there. Has to get that ball on target and wasn't able to do so. Ashizume driving forward again. Washburn tested by Wada, but he won the test. Hashizume, it's a lovely turn. Oh, and it's right behind El Fares who attempted the scorpion kick. I thought that was Olivier Giroud down there for a second, Jamie. That was a lovely bit of, a lovely attempt right there. Just didn't come off. That would have been a great goal, one of the greatest goals we've seen this season, but didn't come off and Tobacco Road on the counter. Now a chance for Tobacco Road, Nelson. Wada, his early ball. Nearly found Moreno. This game is opening up beautifully. And Jamie, this is what we want to see. This is the final game of the season. This game not really meaning much in terms of in terms of standings. Besides Tobacco Road having an opportunity to move into fourth place with a little help from the Charlotte Eagles, but you want to see that free flowing game. It's been a tight affair tonight, like a almost like a final type game. Jamie, both teams really scared to make mistakes and do anything wrong. And hopefully, this game opens up in the final 30 minutes or so. We'll have to see though. It, Looks like that's what is about to what's about to happen, but you just never know. Throw in to be taken by Nelson. Sixty minutes gone, and yet to see a goal here at Durham County Memorial Stadium tonight. But we might just see one in the next few minutes. I certainly hope so. I'd love for this game just to open up a little bit. and just short of options. He finds Lopez. Ruhak. Looking for the run of Moreno. It's cleared by Jenkinson. Lopez. Now Frick. Better spells of possession for Tobacco Road. Del Rosario, Nelson, just found Pineda, Hanapel, Nelson again, and then back towards Ruhok. Tobacco Road just comfortable in possession, not trying to force anything going forward. Perhaps they need to be a bit more adventurous. Hanapel. It's a freak. Del Rosario. Oh, Washburn cut it out. Early ball for Ellis. It's cleared away by Comcia. Alfares pressuring Lopez. May have fouled him. Nelson switched over to the right hand side. And now Hanapel has some space in the center. And he did excellently to win the ball. and very unlucky to get a yellow card there. Not sure about that one. A clean tackle to me, Jamie. Hanapel gets nothing but ball there. At least it looked like it from up here. And Hashizumi just looks like he sold that one a little bit. Hope he's all right. Wouldn't be surprised for him to get up in the next couple of seconds, though, and be in no pain at all. I think he sold that one a little bit, Jamie. I think that was a clean tackle from Hanapel. Unlucky for him to go in the book at the referee though, was having none of that. Yeah, from our angle, at least, it looked like Canapel won nothing but the ball. See, Hashizume seems to be fine now, but been a theme over the past few years, past few seasons, especially this World Cup this year. A lot of guys going down easy, trying to buy those fouls. I mean, you can't blame them in a lot of ways. If you can help your team win the game, you got to do what you got to do, but Hashizume was completely fine now after being in what we thought was a ton of pain a few 30 seconds ago, so unlucky for Hanapel. Headed away by Frick. Lopez just caught underneath it, and Coleman Trailer tried something extraordinary there with the back heel. Del Rosario. Tobacco Road just under pressure trying to get out, and Alfarez maybe lucky not to be booked for that. Sold the challenge on Frick. Lopez. 
Becker Road just can't keep the ball right now. Every time they get a chance to build on some possession, they just lose it cheaply. Pineda. Now Wada. Del Rosario. Ruhok. And Moreno finds Frick. Nelson. Cut out well by Washburn. Throw in taken quickly. Nelson. This looks dangerous. Nelson! Oh, good stop from Sean So. What a, a corner. What a save. Sorry to interrupt you, Jamie. What a save that was from Sean Stowe there. Has had little to do since coming on at halftime and makes a brilliant save for there. John. John Nelson with a beautiful strike on goal. And that thought that ball was destined for the back of the net, but Stowe has something to say about it. Big right hand on it and parries that ball away from danger. Great save. Moreno takes the corner short. Finds Nelson. Clip back towards Frick and headed away by Jenkinson. Hanapel. Pineda. Finds Hanapel again. Those two working on the right hand side. Pineda. He'll have a go and it's high and wide. Not very handsome. Yeah, let off there for Tobacco Road. Pineda with that weaker left foot, try to put that one in the top corner. It looked like just bend that around the into that far post, but ends up skyrocketing it over the crossbar. But a little bit better from, from Tobacco Road, all through John Nelson with that first attempt. And really unlucky not to find the back of the net with the amount of action Sean Stowe has seen to be called in and make a good save like that. Got to give credit to him. It looks like Lions Bridget made a double substitution. Hashizume and... El Fares have come off. Coming onto the pitch is Cleef Desir and Travis Cook. Headed down by Pineda. Hooked on by Lopez. Wada's always down for a chase and Sean Stowe was well off his line. And Ruhok just couldn't find Hanapel with the header. Ellis. Burton. Clipped into no one in particular. Scott will look to release Wada. Up against Washburn. That's a clear mismatch. And Washburn looked like he fouled Wada, but referee says nothing. Headed away by Lopez. Now Johnny Nelson. Moreno. Closed down by Fitch. Hanapel. Graham was alert to the danger. Moreno. You just feel a chance coming for one of these teams. And at the moment, Tobacco Road looking brighter than they did in the first half. But that ball is always going to be claimed by Sean Stowe. Yeah, Jamie, I think... Either of these teams could get a goal at any second, it seems like right now, with how open this match has become. But Tobacco Road just lacking a little bit of that quality, a little bit of that final ball in the final third. Just haven't been able to put it together. I've had some decent opportunities going forward. I've started to connect a little bit more passes in the final third, but just lacking that, that product, that final product that you need to, to really just get a goal in this division. We've seen it all year, James. This is a tough division to play in. Everybody is good. Everybody's solid. These guys play at a high level collegiately, so you got to be on top of your game at all times. And can't have giveaways like that like Del Rosario just did. That's a poor decision from him, but he has it back. Lopez, lovely switch for Nelson. Can he beat Washburn? He can. Oh, and Wada missed it. Pineda. Still a chance for Tobacco Road. Hanapel. And then again. Second effort was nowhere near the first. And Mauricio Pineda just hesitant to shoot right there. Had a beautiful opportunity on his favored right foot and just hesitated too long. Ended up having to give it to Hannibal, who just kind of snatched at it and then comes back out to Hannibal, takes an awkward bounce in front of him. It was always going to be tough to get that one on target. That's another letdown for Tobacco Road. Pineda should have just had that ripper there. This late in the match, this late in the season. Have one on target. Test the substitute goalkeeper. You never know what's going to happen. Pineda just hesitated and 
think he made the wrong decision there, but that's better from Tobacco Road again, but we see it. It's just not the final product. It's just not there. 68 minutes gone in. Find ourselves wondering how neither side have scored a goal. Cook just lost the ball. Nelson. Tobacco Road trying to counter. Back to Nelson from Pineda. Wada. Just couldn't break through that stout Lionbridge defense. Yeah, Lionsbridge defense has been exceptional tonight. They've done a really good job, especially on the counter attack, getting back and just stopping it in its tracks. But I'll start it from John Nelson again. I want him to get on the ball even more because when he gets the ball and goes forward with that pace, he's so dangerous. He's just such a direct player. You love to see that from your left wing back. It's a Lions Bridge ball. Nelson just couldn't get a toe on it completely. Comsia gives it away cheaply again. Graham flicked on towards Cook. Comsia just sees him away. Used his body well, but Ruhok got caught and nearly clipped Burton. Maybe Burton could have sold that and won a foul, but. Very honest of him to stay on his feet there. Good work there by Coleman Thaler, just working, doing that dirty work, working back and winning that because Pineda was in a great position to switch that ball out to this left side and Coleman Thaler just came out of nowhere and broke it all up. Burton will have a go. That's three points, Jamie, right through the uprights. Zach Sart, not in a, too much of a hurry to take the goal kicks tonight. Del Rosario, Lionsbridge win it back. How many times have we said that tonight? Cleef Desir, Del Rosario, just trying to get himself out of a hole and was unable to do it with Desir at his back. And Tobacco Road just putting themselves back under pressure not working the ball out to the back as well as they thought they could. Yeah, their hold-up play from their forward three of, of Moreno, Wada, and, and Del Rosario has just not been good at all tonight. Not able to hold that ball long enough for players to run onto it and, and, and really build on that counterattack. Del Rosario has given the ball away cheaply a few times with his back to goal. And unfortunately for Tobacco Road, without the likes of Eli Gardner, they don't really have a physical tall striker. That Moreno, Wada, and, and Del Rosario lineup is, is very small in stature. Militar comes on for Ellis and immediately trying to cause problems. It looks like that ball may have crossed the touchline, and either way, it's a tobacco road throw in. Seventy-second minute here at Durham County Memorial Stadium. On the final day of the season. Oh, and it's a chance for Cook. Good save by Scott. And then an even better tackle from Comsia. What an unbelievable challenge. What a save that was by Comsia to come in. That was like a certain goal. But, Jamie, that's just a mistake again from Tobacco Road. Leads to that chance in the first place, but Comsia bails him out. This looks like maybe picked up a knock there as well. I'm sure that one hurt as he slid in crucially there. Great bit of defending by him. That was nothing short of brilliant from Alex Comsia, who has had question marks tonight on his performance, but that sums it all up. The man has quality, and so does this man coming off. Joaquin Del Rosario. On comes Tommaso De Agostino. Tobacco Road are still in search of that all-important goal here. 
And once this game opens up, you have to say it could well be a goal fest. It could be, Jamie. I think the first one's going to open the floodgates for both teams. It just what really comes ball. down to who's going to get it. Sorry there, Jacob. Just had to admire that ball from Combs here. You can see an air of confidence from him now that he stopped his team from going behind. And in previous games, for Tobacco Road, that may have well ended up in the back of the net. Just bad luck. But might be something different here tonight for this Tobacco Road side. I certainly hope so. I was... Still in a little bit of disbelief that ball didn't find the back of the net based on kind of how Tobacco Road's season has gone. But Kamzi always been decent. He's been really good, this I think, this season as a defender. I think the only question marks with me for him has just been his distribution at times. And we just saw him play a beautiful ball to Hannipel. So that confidence of saving that ball, I think, hopefully will, will do good for this Tobacco Road team going into the final 10 minutes. Pineda just trying to... Rob Militar of the ball and ends up fouling him instead. Militar rolling around in a, a lot of pain down there, Jamie, grabbing that right ankle. Looks like the back of his boot might have came off. Looks like he was putting it back on. Seems to be back on his feet now right now. Looks like he's favorite to take this free kick. The player is usually in the attacking half, taking one from nearly halfway. Lead away by Diagostino. Cook, flicked on by Burton, towards McVeigh. Cleared away by Combs here. Burton did well to get past Ruhak. It's a chance here. Comsia <laughs> nearly put it in his own net and Zach Scott was composed. Militar shown the yellow card for a bit of silly play there trying to stop Zach Scott's distribution. Militar stepped to him like you wanted to fight him for a second, Jamie. I didn't know if there was some words exchanged. Zach Scott was having none of it down there, but referee, no hesitation. Rightly so, I believe. Militar just... Unnecessary bit of, bit of play right there. No need for that. Fourteen minutes to go, plus stoppage time for either Tobacco Road or Linesbridge to try and put one in the back of the net. What a touch there from Pineda. Moreno. Colmontola got a touch to it and so did Graham, but Tobacco Road are pressing here. Pineda, it's a good touch from Moreno to get past Burton. Hannapel nearly found him. And then Linesbridge come back on the counter. Burton. Closed down by Diagostino, but he has it back. Militar. Burton was clipped as he made a support run. Just Free kick to Linesbridge. It's a silly foul there from Diagostino. I completely no need for that. Uncalled for. Poor, just poor play right there from Diagostino, who, since he's come on the field, hasn't seen much action, but Tobacco Road certainly had that counterattack cover, and Diagostino gives Linesbridge an opportunity here to, to put a ball in the danger area, so poor foul by him. Of all the chances created tonight, most of Linesbridge's have been from set pieces. Militar will take this free kick towards McVeigh, heads it back. Desir, looked like he was caught in two minds as to lay that off or to shoot. Graham, Militar, towards McVeigh, and he can't redirect the header on target. It's numerous times that McVeigh has gone on the end of these deliveries, and at some point he's going to make one count. It's the second time tonight we've seen McVeigh just make a mess of a good opportunity with his head. Not sure if he saw that one late or what, but completely mishit that header. Scott. And Ruhart gives it away. Militar. Burton. Numbers forward here for Linesbridge. 
Crucial intervention from Ruhok. May lead to a counter for Tobacco Road. Diagostino was clipped there by Simon Fitch. Tobacco Road will still try and build out to the back. Comes here. He did excellently there, but Tobacco Road still trying to press forward here. Lopez, wide for Moreno. Nelson has come all the way inside for the moment. Hannapel, flick back for Nelson. Back to Henry Hannapel. Oh, and that's not the best decision from him, trying to find Pineda with the back heel blindly. Desir was clipped by Moreno. It's a yellow card, but not quite sure how much Moreno actually got of Desir there. Jamie, I think this referee might have the quickest hands in, that I've seen this season. His ability to pull that yellow card out of his pocket is unbelievable. I mean, I, I, rightly so. I think he's had, all, has had a very good evening, but he pulls that yellow card out with ease. almost like he's a, a magician, just pops in his hand. But yeah, I think a little bit of a questionable foul there. I think it was the right one. Moran with that high boot nine times out of ten. You're going to go in the book for that. 80th minute here, still nil-nil. This game on a knife edge, you certainly can sense a goal coming. Cook. Nelson will pick up the loose ball. And will drive forward for Tobacco Road in. That's a wonderful ball, Wada. The touch took him away from goal. Nelson did well to find Diagostino. Pineda in from Hannapel. Wada! And again, Tobacco Road have a chance that goes a begging. And that's so much better from Tobacco Road going forward, but. Once again, it just comes to that hesitation. Nobody willing to shoot and have a shot on goal. Ends up coming back to Pineda, and his only real option is to play it to Hannibal and who have a cross, but this Lions Ridge back line is twice the size of Tafwada. And Tafwada able to get the head on it, but always going to be hard with a floating ball like that to get it on target with power. But great bit of skill there by it all comes through John Nelson making that direct run. Lovely bit of skill by him. Just hesitant to have a shot on goal. And at this point in the match, you got to test the goalkeeper. Desir nearly found Cook. and Nelson's lost out here, but did well to win it off Desir the second time around. D'Agostino. These two teams really stretch now. You can see the gaps. Moreno. Loose touch and... Militar couldn't keep possession. Colmantola nearly caught Lopez. Pineda. Hannapel. Wada. Hannapel. And then cleared away by Washburn. Tobacco just not able to connect enough passes consistently. Go through a bit of spells where they do brilliantly and they just give it away cheaply there. Here's Henry Hannapel. Comes here. Tobacco just trying to gain back a sense of composure. Moreno's ball couldn't find Wada. D'Agostino pressuring Fitch. And Fitch does well, but not well enough to find a teammate. Nelson. Cut out by Lopez, Pineda, shrugging off Washburn as if he's not even there. Tried to find Moreno, but couldn't get the right ball. Diagostino, now Frick. Nelson, always looking to come inside. Moreno, wide for Wada. 
Can the main man for Tobacco Road come up with a chance? Took a deflection on the way through and it'll be a corner. Goalkeeper Sean Stowe just kicking the ball away. Not sure the referee's not spotted that. It was a mistake there by Sean Stowe initially. No need for him to save that initial shot. That ball was clearly wide. Then does have a kick of the ball. Surprised to not see him go in the book. This referee has had no problem whipping the card out tonight. Be Wada's delivery. It's a deep one. Comsia. Pineda. Smackerud look to reset. Lopez. And it's straight at Sean Stowe. Poor cross there by Moreno. Really no options in the middle. And Tobacco Road getting in some promising positions, Jamie, but just have absolutely nothing to show for it. Look, just look like they're lacking a creativity up there. Somebody who just takes the ball and makes something happen. Less than 10 minutes to go now between these two sides. Lack of finishing tonight has been a problem, to say the very least. Washburn deceives Frick and Frick just caught him there. Referee might decide to book Matthias Frick, but instead just awards the free kick. It wasn't a malicious challenge from our point of view. No, definitely not. Matthias Frick giving a little high five, apologizing to Washburn there. He knew he was a little late on that tackle, but necessary. He had to put the challenge in nonetheless, and Washburn was on the run there. Great bit of skill by him to to win it and go forward, but it's a promising position and Ivan Militar on the ball right here. If he can put a ball into that 18 yard area, 15 yard area, this is gonna be dangerous for Tobacco Road. In from Militar. D'Agostino heads away. Oh and it's fallen for Desir. Oh and a good save from Scott. Cleared away by Diagostino. And Jamie, that's two mistakes from me from Diagostino there. Initially, just a poor clearance, sleeps on the ball, and then Zach Scott makes a great save, but Diagostino takes it away from him. Ball was right there for him to, and Zach Scott's reaching for it, and Diagostino chooses to, to just kick it out and ends up being a free kick. So that's two mistakes in a row from Diagostino, who, not to pick on him, to pick on the boy tonight, but since he's come on, has not had a great second half, Jamie. has just made a few mistakes, and can't have that at this level. So all it takes is one mistake and it's one nothing and you find yourself behind in the, with five minutes to go and that's not what Tobacco Road need and not what they deserve tonight. Clipped in from Militar, cleared away by Pineda. Wada being pushed, basically pushed over by Washburn. Fitch clears it away. Nelson will take the throw in. Just sense a lack of urgency from Tobacco Road getting this ball forward. Not long left, and they're going to catch themselves in a bit of trouble here if they don't get it into the opposing team's half quicker than they have been, and that's just a poor giveaway again. We've seen them this season, especially over the past month or so, finish games really poorly, and you can just hope it's Tobacco Road. They don't let up any more good opportunities for, for Lionsbridge because Lionsbridge seems to be getting the better chances, at least over the past few minutes or so, when in all honesty, Tobacco Road have really controlled most of this match for the most part, especially the second half. D'Agostino did well and does so again. Trying to take it quickly and the referee. Not sure why it mattered. Looks like the referee wanted to move up five yards when he was. Never really seen a referee pull a play back for the ball being too far backwards, but referee. Still not allowing the free kick to be taken. Wasn't happy with the positioning of the ball, as you mentioned. Confused there, Jamie. Diogos Frick just took it from the same spot Diogostino initially played it. I'm not sure why the referee decided to bring that back. Questionable referee in there. Lopez. It's a good combination play there between him and Hanapel. And Hanapel finds Diagostino. Look to create something with his experience. On the pitch, Diagostino nearly went all the way. It's a tame effort in the end from the 
the young Italian. It was a great run initially by Di Agostino, and I think he just chose the wrong option, decided to just kind of have a toe poke shot at goal. Was never going to test Sean Stowe. To see it just not strong enough against Frick. Militar put a boot in there towards Di Agostino. What a Johnny Nelson. Great save from Sean Stowe again. He read the danger. Ruhok in a chase with Burton and he wins the battle. Jamie, Jamie this, excuse me, this game is there for the taking for Tobacco Road. Pineda finds Nelson again. Hanapel, Moreno deflected and it's a corner. It's better play, Jamie, and most of Tobacco Road's dangerous attacks in this second half, especially over the last few minutes, have come through that man, John Nelson, number five for Tobacco Road. Every time he gets on the ball, he looks to make something happen. I'm just a little bit disappointed he's not choosing to shoot more. He's finding himself in really good positions and has just been hesitant. Flipped in from Pineda. Was looking for Frick. And Cook just boots it anywhere. Anywhere will do. D'Agostino. And Lionsbridge are on the back foot. Tobacco, Tobacco Road have them reeling right now in the final few minutes. Lopez. Pineda. It's a good ball in. Nearly found Wada. Lopez. Pineda again. Those two will be playing alongside each other at Chapel Hill in the fall. Oh, and it's flags for offside against Nelson. It's an excellent finish from Wada, but Sean Stowe had given up. Jamie, I, I know the crowd in front of us thought that was a goal, the majority of them. Just an offside's rule in there, and man, that's unlucky for Tobacco Road. This place will erupt if they can find a goal late on here and end the season on with three points on a high note and put themselves really in pole position to, to finish fourth place in this in this South Atlantic division out of six teams, obviously not the greatest finish, but definitely looks better than fifth. And we're into added time. Later on here, smoke flares going off, even though there hasn't been a goal. Something we've been accustomed to seeing from Tobacco Road. Brightly for Italian supporters. Maybe they can get one. Wada challenging McVeigh. Still not sure how much added time there will be. Moreno, cut out by Militar and he's fouled. And then Moreno, oh, and it's getting horrible out there. Militar throwing hands at Moreno and Moreno. Looks like he had his hand raised into Washburn and now Sean Stowe is getting involved. McVeigh's getting involved. It's getting very ugly. Not what you want to see at the end of the season, but... Both sides really at fault there. It was initially Moreno who looked like he just kicked the ball at the player who had hit the ground for Lionsbridge. And the referee's got a decision to make here. He's going to have words with Washburn as well as the Tobacco Road FC player who was involved. And Ivan Militar, Jamie, absolutely goes ballistic for no reason. This whole Lionsbridge team... Sean Stowe makes a 60-yard, excuse me, not a 60-yard, a 40-yard run to the referee out of a goal for no reason. He has to go in the book. The referee was holding him back, and he was fighting him the whole time. How is Sean Stowe not getting a yellow card right now? And how is Ivan Militar not on, is even on the pitch? Still absolutely incredible scenes here. And some of these lines with players should be ashamed of themselves. The way they reacted to that, absolutely useless. I know Oscar Moreno kicks the ball out right at the Lions Bridge player, but there's no reason for four guys to come rushing over there trying to fight. I just don't get it. Looks like Moreno also had a bit to play in that as well, to be fair, but the reaction from both sets of players really wasn't the best. It really wasn't, Jamie. And I, I know Oscar Moreno makes a mistake. And that's him. Looks like he's done for the night, Oscar Moreno, as he walks down the tunnel. He, if anything, at the very least, it's a second yellow. I just don't see the point of lines with three lines with players, especially Militar and Sean Stowe, rushing over there and trying to fight. 
Remember mistakes about it. That was not a friendly conversation. There was, there was some hands thrown as well. I just think it's unnecessary. And both teams at fault, but a lot of those players look, look like they were just picking a fight there. And Cedric Burke just comforting what Parker Washburn, knowing that Washburn really didn't have too much to play in that at all. He really didn't. And not, not, no fault at, at Washburn whatsoever. Oscar Moreno makes the initial mistake. I'm not sure what these, what the what the referee and crew is talking about right now. Wouldn't be surprised to see an, a number of cards up here. For me, Jamie, Sean Stowe has got to go in the book. He makes a 30-yard run for no reason and gets in the middle of everything. Very aggressively as well. And even on Militar's, if he doesn't go in the book, then I don't know what, what this referee is thinking. Is, is He was really the forefront of everything. Well, no matter what happens next, there surely is going to be a lot of stoppage time at the end of this match, unless the referee just decides to call it at nil-nil. But they must be trying to figure out who and needs to be booked and just sort things out. McVeigh and Cedric Burke just having some positive words after ha initially having some negative ones, but looks like Cedric Burke has been sent off by the referee. Jamie, I think that... I'm not sure the decision behind that. I think that card was given to Oscar Moreno, oh, okay. who's already left the field. I was a little bit confused as to why the refer referee pointed that card right at Cedric Burke, but I think Oscar Moreno knew he was gone. Just walk to the locker room. Interesting way to end your season from Moreno's point of view, isn't it? McVeigh and Sean Stowe have been shown yellow cards. Not sure how Ivan Militar hasn't been shown anything. Oh, he's a lucky boy, Jamie. But For me, he had to go in the book. Absolutely all, had to. Of all the players to be shown yellow cards, I think McVeigh is a bit unlucky there. McVeigh certainly found himself in the middle of it. but like he, he was even trying to break things up. Yeah, exactly. I think Ivan Militar has to be super fortunate right now. I thought he personally... Uh, definitely should have got a yellow card. And even could have been sent off. If I saw correctly, had a lot of flare smoke in front of me. It looked like some hands were thrown in. A military looked like he was at the forefront of it. No clear-cut punches, but definitely some makes arms being extended. And I just didn't see a need for it. It was a very just soft thing to get as mad as these Lionsbridge players did. A bit of frustration, frustration from both sides, and it's surely built up over the course of the 90 minutes with both sides just struggling to create any good chances in front of goal and I didn't quite personally see that one building up but it did and now there's more of an, a need to win this game for both teams as it will end nil nil the referee deciding not to add on a lot of added time and the final score here at Durham County Memorial Stadium ends nil nil between Tobacco Road FC and Lionsbridge FC and it was a frantic ending to the this match and the end of the season, but I have to say that just sums it up for Tobacco Road. Very frustrating. Some positive performances in there for them over the course of the season, but Elby's frustrated from what just happened in front of them. What a weird end of the season we just saw, Jamie. The fight, the, referees, uh, the whole refereeing crew sat there and talked for four minutes, and the referee adds absolutely no time. I don't understand that one. That is as questionable refereeing as I've seen all season. And I'm as puzzled, puzzled as you are on that. I've never seen a referee, refereeing crew sit there for about five minutes deciding what to do and then add absolutely no extra time. I don't understand that. Especially with a game as tight as this was, both teams sitting in nil-nil. Obviously not a lot in it, but still, you got to let these players play a full 90 minutes, and I don't know if they got it, but what a weird ending of the season we just saw, Jamie. And glad to see Tobacco Road get a point. Really fo turn the issue now to Charlotte Eagles. If they Charlotte Eagles lose tomorrow, Tobacco Road will finish in, in that in that four spot. Which, after the season they've had, wouldn't be too bad of a finish. Obviously, only six teams in the league, so you know, fourth place a little bit sounds a little bit deceiving. But I think we saw a really entertaining match. You know, besides there being no goals, this is one of the more entertaining matches we've seen. Both teams going back and forth, and I think what really let Tobacco Road down tonight, especially, was just that inability to to take a chance and have a shot in the final third. They're very hesitant in and around the box. And, and I think that really came back to haunt them because they really found themselves in some really good positions, especially late in that second half. And whether it was Mauricio Pineda or John Nelson, just hesitant to, to have a shot on target and really test Sean Stowe, who made a really good initial save earlier in the, earlier in the half, but for the most part wasn't tested at all. Not the result we expected here between these two sides, but coming up after the break, we'll break it down more for you here from Durham.
a crazy ending here at Durham County Memorial Stadium. A huge ball breaks out, but the result ends nil-nil between Tobacco Road and Lions Bridge SC. And it's a frustrating night for both sides who created chances but weren't able to finish them. Yeah, it was, it was a night of, uh, especially in that second half, that game really opened up a lot. And I'm, s I'm shocked to be walking away from this game without uh, a goal. Uh, we talked about it pregame. We really thought this game was going to be full of it based on what we've seen earlier this season between the two teams. And it just wasn't the case. Both teams just lacking a little bit of that quality that you need in the final third. And I think that's what really hurt, especially Tobacco Road. They had some really good opportunities with a better team in the second half. And as it's been a theme all season, they're going to feel a little bit unfortunate not to walk away with three points because I think just by a little bit they deserved it. Lions Bridge, as we saw right there, players really getting in aggressive right there. Tobacco Road also a questionable bit of a referee at the end. You know, as we talked about right at the end of that game, Jamie, the referee talked about the decision for four or five minutes before, you know, looked like Yvonne Militar threw a punch, doesn't end up getting a card. And, and you know, they talk, sit there and talk about it for five minutes and we get absolutely no added time. So, Bit of, a little bit of question with refereeing at the end of that game. Thought the referee, for the most part, had a, did a good job, but don't want to focus on him too much. I think this game, just completely shocked right now, is almost at a loss of words that we didn't see a goal because this game opened up so much. Both teams had a ton of opportunities, especially Tobacco Road, and just weren't able to capitalize on them. It was just a lack of confidence, it looked right, from both sets of players. More on the Tobacco Road side with just not having the confidence enough to take a shot. Yeah, I think that's really what it came down to. We touched a lot of, on it when it was happening. Tobacco Road... I remember John Nelson and Mauricio Pineda, two guys I don't want to focus on too much, but they had found themselves in some really good positions a lot of the times. And what they were choosing to do instead was playing that ball out wide against the back line of Lionsbridge that against really only Toph Wada leading the line. You know, the, the two center backs are twice the size of him. So choosing to have a cross is just a let off for me. And Lionsbridge were going to take that all day and let that happen. And they did, and they dealt with it every time superbly. And Tobacco Road, really besides in the first half through Pineda and Del Rosario, that was really their best chance. And if it wasn't for some great goalkeeping, Tobacco Road would have found themselves up early. And who knows what would, would have happened in the second half because Lionsbridge would have had to chase. But just shocked at what I've seen. I really thought Tobacco Road was going to find the back of the net. But, you know, based on their last month, month and a half of, of how they played, it, a little bit surprised to, to, to see them come away with, with a point. But I think they deserve three, and they'll feel a little bit unfortunate not to. Not the result that I decided looking for, and especially Tobacco Road. They really wanted the three points on a two-game losing streak here after facing Myrtle Beach twice, who finished champions. Congratulations to them. But yeah. talking about this game and talking about the future, how do Tobacco Road approach next season, having seen how this one went? Started off really well and then sort of had it there and, there and few of good results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been, it's been a frustrating season, make no mistakes about it. I know early in the year we were really optimistic about this team. They started so well, went on the road to Carolina Damo, came back home and got you know two wins on the bounce and looked really promising going in. And, on paper, we were really happy to see this team as well because there's a lot of talent on this roster, you know, a lot of talent from the area, you know, Carolina, Duke, UNCW, a um, few guys who played NC State back in the day. So, yeah, there's a lot of talent on the squad, but, you know, going into next season, what they really need to focus on is building. You know, you got to build every season. There's a really good backroom staff here. You know, Seth Kaplan, the owner, has done a great job of building this club up. The fan base this year has been superb. We've had, you know, doubled in size of what we had last season and have got some really good reviews and feedback from, from away, away teams that have come into our stadium and, and have been treated well by the guys we have working. And, you know, whether it's social media, whether it's game day experience, whether it's the product on the field, it's gotten better. The only thing that really has been a little bit of disappointment is the past month or so with how Tobacco Road just haven't able, been able to build on that early success that they had on the season and take it on to the next level and really, you know, make a, make a, you know, a, a claim and a, and, a, and a charge at the top of that league. Just weren't able to do it. And I think looking back on the season, we'll take some positives away. Um, but this team next season, they want to have a better year than this because I think on paper with the talent they had, they should have put up a little bit bigger of a fight throughout the most of the year, but they had some unlucky breaks as well. But I think especially in this sport, you make your own luck and just don't think Tobacco Road had enough quality throughout the season to, to really deserve to, to have a little bit better of a record. But a few games go the other way, and you know, Tobacco Road is sitting in you know, the top three position pretty single-handedly, but just we're on the unlucky side of most of these results this year. But you know, hopefully they build on it next year and have an even better year, but, you know. Just not the season Tobacco Road wanted but by any means, but, you know, it's going to be exciting to see how they do this year as this club continues to grow. Well, we can only hope for the best, and it's been an absolute pleasure bringing to you Tobacco Road's action over the course of this season and last season as well. I'm not sure if this will be our last season with Tobacco Road, but we surely like to be involved in some way with the club going forward, and you know, maybe next season you'll see us in front of this camera calling the games as well. But well, who knows what the future holds, and we know that it's going to be bright for this club. Yeah, it's going to be bright for this club, Jamie, and Regardless of what we do next season, I'd love to be back on the, on, on the gantry with you, as you say, Jamie, and picked up that term this season. But, you know, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been a really entertaining season. Obviously not the 
uh, not the season results wise that we wanted, but you know, it's always fun to watch this team play and the guys we work with in the backroom staff and the players have been able to meet all top class guys. So can't say enough about this club and going forward, I'm excited to, excited to see how this team grows and for our video production staff as well, they've done a great job, you know, compared to what we had next season, last season, excuse me, it's been superb, just, you know, uh, just bounds better, you know, just, it's, it's been amazing. So looking forward to see next season, hopefully we have a, a lot of these guys back and hopefully we're back in the booth, but you never know what the future holds. But for this club, the, is, going forward, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes and you know, hopefully this club's around five to ten years, and if they are, I mean, it's, it's going to be huge. I'm, I'm excited to see how soccer continues to grow in Durham. Well, we'd like to thank you all for joining us one last time here on the TRFC Network. It's been a pleasure here from Jamie Patel and Jacob Turner signing off one last time here in Durham. Oh, and he's finished it off! Gunner!